So let's take a look at the code for the reader and the writer, and then I'll run through uh, an example, um, and then we'll see how the whole thing works. So first, um, you check the yourself into the system. So you, you acquire the lock uh, if you're a reader. So this is to indicate to others that uh, you want to be able to read write the database. So this does not change. You still acquire the lock. So with reader writer, you don't. It's not like you have less locks. You just allow more parallelism in the presence of lock. Okay. So normally you would not have only one reader could have gotten to, at the point where you do this lock acquire. But now you'll see that as you go along, that you could have more than one reader possibly entering. Okay. So what we're going to do is first check if there are any active or waiting writers. So if there either one exists, okay, then you queue yourself up in the system. Okay, so you increment the waiting data variable and you get to wait on this conditional lock uh, on the condition of okay to read. Okay, so you start sleeping on the conditional variable. Uh, to learn more about conditional variables, you got to go take a look at the previous uh, videos in this segment. Um, and then once you wake up, you get out of the system. Okay, now the question is what do you do at this point? So now technically you can access the database. The first thing you do is actually increment the active readers and immediately release the lock. The reason we release the lock here is so that you can have other readers trying to get into the system at this point. So the minute you release the lock here, you can have more readers appearing here. If you didn't release the lock here, then other readers cannot get into the database at the same time, which is what our objective was. Then you perform the actual database access, which is a read-only operation. And then you finally check out of the system. Note that when you check when you check into the system, you do a lock acquire lock release. When you check out, you again do a lock acquire lock release. Uh, the lock actually protects these variables as well, these uh, active readers and uh, waiting writers variables, which you're using to set up the whole system. So you get the lock, you decrement the active readers variable since you've already finished manipulating it, and if the number of active readers is zero and the number of waiting writers is greater than zero, then you do an okay to write, okay? So note that we check if we are the last reader in the system, that is no other active reader. So if there are five readers, then you wait, the la only the last reader that gets out of the system signals to the waiting writer, okay? And you check if there's a waiting writer by, you know, whether it's greater than zero, and you wake up exactly one of them, right? Um, Okay, so we've already gone through why we released the lock here. We released the lock so that um, other readers can try to get into the system at the same time. An important thing to note here is that um, if you look at the initial part of the code, the minute a writer enters into the system, readers get queued up. So the minute there's a waiting writer in the system, you'll have further readers, you know, essentially waiting on the OK to read variable. This ensures that at any, any given time, writers do make progress. That eventually, when a writer is waiting, that once the set of readers that were manipulating the database before it finish, it will get permission on the database. Okay, it's not the case that if readers keep queuing up, the writer will get starved. The writer doesn't get starved because readers check the fact if there's a waiting writer, and if there is, then they queue themselves up. Okay, so let's take a look for the code for the writer. It starts off with similar. First, you check yourself into the system. You check if there are any active writers or readers. Right? So now it's not just active um, uh, writers, uh, active readers. You also check for writers because only one writer can manipulate it at any given time. You then, if there are any readers or writers, you queue yourself up in the system. And then you, once you become active, you increment the writer and you release the lock. Note that we release the lock here even though we are a writer. The reason we release the lock here is because the lock itself is not protecting the database, but it's actually protecting these variables. So you want other readers and writers to be able to indicate to each other where, where they are. Do we have any active readers in the system? Do we have any active writers? So the lock itself is used to do atomic operations or mutually exclusive operations on these integers. Okay? So that's the sole purpose of the lock, not to protect the database itself. That's done by this, this entire code sequence. And then you perform the actual database read-write access. 
And when you check out of the system, your decremental riders, um, you check if there are any waiting riders and you signal to the rider if needed. You then check if there are waiting readers and if there's readers, then you broadcast a signal. So a couple of different things to note here. The first condition we check is if there are any waiting riders. Not the readers, but we check if there are any waiting riders. Okay. And the second thing to note is that we signal here while we broadcast here. Okay. So why broadcast here instead of signal? So the reason we broadcast is that with writers, if you want to get a writer to wake up, then we want exactly only one writer to wake up because only one writer can manipulate the database at any given time. But with readers, you could have all of them manipulate the database at the same time, which means you want them all to be activated at the same time. And so you broadcast the reads while you signal to the writes. The other thing to notice is that we also give higher priority to this if with the writers than the readers. This is because um, you got to think about statistically which is more common. Normally, you have more writes, uh, more reads than writes. That's the whole point of the reader writer uh, database uh, optimization. Right? Because you have more reads, you can all have get more parallelism by allowing all the reads to happen in parallel. So, if you have more reads than writes in the system technically waiting, then you don't want the writers to stop. Right? So, if you only if you check the condition, if you Think about which is more likely. Uh, the likely that waiting readers are greater than zero is going to be a pretty high uh, like likelihood. If that's the case, then you're, you're never going to be able, to, you're never going to take this other path, and you're always going to be waking up the readers and hence starving the writers. So in this case, if you check the writers before the readers, then once in a while, since the writers are not that common, you'll find the case that the um, writers. Um, uh, this condition would fail and you would actually activate the reads. Obviously, there is the case that if you have writers appearing in the system all the time, then they will stop the readers. But statistically, it's not likely.